I can do that if you'd like. All right, let's go to the phone right now. Let's talk some football with uh, with AJ Mansoor. He is the Vikings reporter for KFan 103 in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. AJ, welcome to the show. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Did I pronounce your last name right? Uh, you're close. It was it's Mansoor. But Mansoor. Mansoor. You're not the first to miss. Okay, sorry about that. AJ Mansoor <laughs> from yeah. the K, from KFan 103. Are you uh, from France? Uh, I am not Lebanon, but French colonized. <laughs> Good point. We get a lot of history lessons here. Wales, mm. Lebanon. I love this. AJ, AP, uh, AP, Adrian Peterson is not only um, running the ball well, but he's running his mouth a lot these days. I mean, he's, he's saying some very provocative stuff. The latest is that he believes he could have gone right from high school to the pros. Obviously, that's not legal right now, but he believes he was mature enough physically and mentally to do that. What is up with AP these days? I mean, there's a lot of bravado there. Is it simply because he's back, he missed a year, he's catching up, he's running the ball well? What's going on? Well, I think it's a combination of everything. Obviously, it's been a year since he's been able to make any of these comments like that, so he is probably catching up a little bit. But Adrian's a little different. You know, ever since the, uh, the situation that kept him off the field last year, he's come back a little different, a little more guarded, a little more poignant with the comments that he's making. And uh, he, he threw former quarterback Christian Ponder under the bus the other day, saying that if Christian Ponder would have been as poised as Teddy Bridgewater, he probably would still be in the league. So this is, in the last two days, Teddy Bridgewater, or sorry, Adrian Peterson has, has said two of these comments that have kind of been headline worthy, and then uh, the one this morning about going straight to the NFL out of high school is the most recent one. You guys should uh, have Adrian get on the phone with the uh, Denver media every week. You get big stories. Yeah, he was entertaining <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he went on for about 25 minutes. Uh, we we have uh, talked about the Vikings. Uh, I'm going to ask you a direct question, and I appreciate you. This is Woody, by the way. I appreciate you being on. Uh, how did the Vikings beat the Broncos this week? Well, you know, they're going to have to kind of continue the game plan that they've had the last couple of weeks. Against the, in week one, everything went wrong for this team. San Francisco, that Monday night game, defense, special teams, and offense, it, it, it was a full-fledged failure for this team, and everyone got really worried. And, and since then, against the Lions and against the Chargers, they've played with a chip on their shoulder and, and, and kind of taken on the bravado of their head coach, Mike Zimmer, who kind of has this, Obviously, he's a defensive-minded guy, but he just kind of has this I'm not going to take any crap from anybody kind of mentality. And the Vikings are, are kind of playing bully football, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And it, they they found success the last couple of weeks in double A gap pressures, bringing uh, a lot of intricate blitzes to uh, to the uh, to the opposite team, and, uh, and after uh, Philip Rivers and Matthew Stafford, and, and they found success that way. They have a couple interesting players in Anthony Barr and Everson Griffin who are big-bodied guys. Anthony Barr, obviously, a linebacker, Griffin, a defensive end. But they're extremely fast, and they can drop into coverage. They can bring pressure on the quarterback, and you can kind of use them as an X factor. And, and he's done that the last couple of weeks, putting these guys up, putting them down, moving them this side, that side, and, and kind of keeping the offense, uh, opposing offense at, at bay and, and kind of off-kilter. So they're going to do it that way, and then they're going to try and carry that same sort of mentality over to the offensive side of the ball. And for, for the longest time, uh, Peyton Manning, whether he's in Indianapolis or Denver, the best defense that you can play against Peyton Manning is keeping the ball out of his hands. So they're going to run the ball. They're going to follow that offensive line and give it to Adrian Peterson and try and control the time of possession. If, if those two things go the way of the Vikings, they're going to stay in this thing, and they'll probably have a chance to win it. So, AJ, do do folks up there, and and does Mike Zimmer believe that that you can win in this pass happy league playing old school football, running game of defense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you know Teddy Bridgewater is is a tick up from what they had with Christian Ponder, where he isn't going to turn the ball over. He's not going to make a lot of mistakes. Um, I don't know if he's to the point yet where you can rely on him to win you a game. There's going to be a point in time where Teddy's going to have to pass you to victory in the fourth quarter and he hasn't proven that well, yet but as long as oh go ahead no no you you you're, you're going right into where i wanted to go with you and so uh forgive me for breaking in but this the team is not really built to come back the vikings aren't they're kind of like that, the chiefs correct. they're kind of like the chiefs of the last few years yeah, under Andy Reid. so what happens if say peyton manning who hasn't done it this year but comes out and has a hot first quarter and the Broncos get uh, 14 points or 10 points or something. 
I mean, does all yeah. of what you're telling us kind of go out the window? And, and I'm not saying that as as an expert of what's going to happen. I'm just asking the question to both of you. I mean, the Vikings don't look to me like a team that can come back. They look like a team if they can t- maintain a level game, they can stay in it. Yeah, you know, this is going to be a, obviously a bit of an inside Minnesota take from being at practice and watching this team through, this team through training camp. They haven't proven the ability to do that. But I think that they are designed more so this year than any of the, uh, the frequent past or re- recent past for this team to do that. You bring in Mike Wallace, you have a deep threat in the receiving game. Charles Johnson, who is going to be questionable going into this game with a rib injury, is your red zone target, a, a high-flying leaper uh, in the red zone. The only question there really, again, is Teddy Bridgewater. Can he do it? He's shown that he can. You know, we saw him in college. We saw every once in a while we see a glimpse of what he can do. So, they are equipped to do it. They just haven't proven it. And then when you okay. have Adrian Peterson, who, despite being a running back and despite, you know, you don't want to hand the ball off in a two-minute drill too often, he does have the home run ability. So, you know, is it the best-case scenario if the Vikings get down early? Absolutely not, because, because you're right. They can't do what they want to do on defense. They can't pin their ears back and rush the quarterback. And then they can't, you know, uh, hand the ball off to Adrian Peterson. So, uh, they'd be much better equipped to keep this game close early on. You're talking about Mike Wallace and deep threat. Forgive, forgive me. And I, not a, he's, he's not a fan, AJ. Just so you know. Yeah, going yeah. into it. So you got, you got to try and convince me. You got to persuade me. Mike Wallace was a great player. I thought early on in his career. Then he goes off and gets a big money. And I and forgive me, people, if you heard this before. And he goes off and he's a dog. And now he's supposed to be the deep threat for the Vikings. He's supposed to be the guy that gets Bridgewater over the bridge, if you will. Uh, sure. Explain to me how he's suddenly been revitalized, the word we used earlier, as the Mike Wallace that I saw in Pittsburgh. Well, absolutely. You know, I, I think that the Mike Wallace, you know, the book is out on Mike Wallace and what he, he can and can't do and where he gets out of the game. We saw how he kind of fell, fell away in, in Miami. Um, you know, Mike Wallace and the way that the Vikings are using him is not even as much the deep threat. And maybe I misspoke a little bit as far wow. as saying he's a dynamic threat. It's not going to be the speed game, deep ball, you're going to get behind the, the cornerback and get the, the deep passes. They're using him in a, in a way that they, they, they drag him across the middle where you get him in open field and you bring the attention to the left side, drag him to the right, and then he has open field ahead of him. And it's not a, a low percentage deep ball pass. It's a higher percentage across the middle pass. Teddy Bridgewater can hit him. They're giving him the end rounds, the you know the reverse plays. They're, they're using him. Uh, to be quite honest, in all the plays that they used to use, Cordero Patterson, before Patterson kind of fell off the plate, and, and, and really didn't really do much for this team anymore. So they're using him in a different fashion of way. So it's not going to be the deep threat, I'm going to outrun this quarterback and get behind him, but they're going to try and get him the ball in space and then let him open up and, and use that speed. AJ, I, you, you've done a good job of persuading me. I will watch him, but I want to see him go across the middle against a team that just loves to personal foul people. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, I want to see Mike Wallace, who's never been – Forgive me, he's never been a tough receiver. He's been a finesse kind of guy. I want to see him and in a, the middle. And a diva kind of guy. Yeah, I want to, I want to see that. I mean, and and you know, you, we'll find out whether you're, you're, you're right about if they're utilizing him in the way that they should be doing. And, and I'm, I'm sure that they are. He did, he did have a chance at a – forgive me, you can tell me, but he did have a chance at an end zone pass last week, and there was a question of whether he should have had that. In that right, he kind of – uh, it was either tipped or he didn't really toughen up to get the ball. Am, am I? Yeah, there, there was one. There was one where he did have a chance there. Uh, and again, yeah. you're, you're right. I mean, I, I, we want to see it here too. You know, Teddy is, is is finding a comfortability with Mike Wallace, but it is around these these across the middle short passes, uh, the bubble screens, and, and, and plays like that. Uh, so we're waiting here in Minnesota too to really see the Mike Wallace pay off that people were waiting for two years in Miami to see and for what he did show in Pittsburgh. So, hey, yeah, I hey, can't completely say that you're wrong with what you're saying. We're all kind of waiting for it. Hey, AJ, last thing. Is Minnesota good enough to challenge Green Bay in that division? Um, you know, until anyone beats Green Bay, it's hard for me to say that, uh, or stops Aaron Rodgers. Maybe that's a better way to put it. It's hard for me to say that. They, they haven't had luck against Green Bay the last couple of years. But for a team that is, is making all the right strides on the defensive side of the ball, 
and doing it very quickly, jumping in close to the top 10 in a pass defense last year after being 31st the year before. And then to this year they continue to, I think they're, they're top five right now in, in passing yardage allowed. They're, they're doing a lot of good things. They hit the quarterback hard. They hit the receivers hard. They're doing the things that you can kind of, on a typical quarterback, do to get inside their head. We see Phillip Rivers cry last week about it. We saw Matthew Stafford complain to the refs about it. But I'm not sure that Aaron Rodgers is flappable like that. And, and unless they really get to him early and often, I don't know that they're going to do it. And until somebody finds a way, uh, some defensive coordinator out there puts some tape on, on film about how to stop Aaron Rodgers and how to stop uh, even a Jordy nelson list passing game, uh, I, I, I can't say that they're going to compete for this division. But we're, the, the excitement here in Minnesota is more so around potential competition for a wild card. Yeah, and, and, and that's, so. that's where I would agree with you because you look around the NFC and you figure that Arizona or Seattle is going to be a wild card team. One, the other one's going to win the division. Nobody else in in your division, the one you cover, you know, there, there's two dog ass teams there. And the, the <laughs> NFC East, uh, the, the team that wins the division is going to be eight and eight or nine and seven. So I mean, really, and, and we can't depend on New Orleans or I mean, you look at Carolina and Atlanta. I guess that's where the competition. But I I, I think that the Vikings have every bit of chance, good a chance of getting in the wild card place. I, I can't see them beating. Uh, but I, th- I think uh, people in Minneapolis and St. Paul have a right to to think about wild card possibilities. You're right. No, absolutely, and, and that's fun for a team that's been out of it by about uh, you know week eight for the last couple of years. Just the idea that they they could be in competition, and, and hopefully they don't go out and lay an egg against any of these teams that you look at the schedule and you say they should be. Uh, because they're not past that yet. They're a very young team that hasn't proven much of anything. So uh, we'll, we'll keep our hope kind of at bay, but it, it's in the back of our minds for sure. Great job. We appreciate Thanks, you. Thanks, How do people uh, get you on Twitter, or how do they listen to you on iHeartRadio or something? What? How do we pay attention to you? Absolutely. You can uh, just search KFAN on iHeartRadio or on Twitter, at AJKFAN. And if I could say one thing before I leave, I was watching uh, a couple segments ago when you had your fantasy guy do the pop shot challenge. And if I'm ever in studio, if I'm ever in Denver, I want to come in there and I want to I want to challenge whoever is the leader in the clubhouse because I got some pop shot game. All right, you're in. <laughs> our, our record here is 39 shots, 39 made shots in one minute. Yeah, you got to be a guy named Chauncey Billups. <laughs> yeah. Chauncey Billups, okay. Former right. Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, that's why yeah. I said yeah. that. Hey, hey AJ, thanks, you. man. You were great.